Good morning. It's 9 a.m. It's that is, as always, when the fun begins. It's our town here on 94.9 and 99.1 The River, a three-guest program. This morning, uh, we will have a conversation with South Wind baseball coach Alex Smith for the third time in four years. The South Wind Warriors are heading to the state baseball tournament. They will open up tournament play next Monday in Carroll. We'll have that conversation with Smitty later on in the program. Next week, it's the Alamakee County Fair and Walk-On, and Michaela Rethamel will join us from the Alamakee County Fair Board. And this weekend, it is the Star City Film Festival and Walk-On. All sorts of fun things going on in the community of Walk-On this weekend. And we will kick off the program with Katie O'Regan from the Sacred Noise Society. Katie uh, and I's conversation will start our town, which is brought to you as always by the Cora Bank and Trust, right here on 94.9 and 99.1 The River. Great. Coming up this weekend is the Star City Film Festival in Walk On, and joining us from the Sacred Noise Society, Katie O'Regan. And Katie, it's been too long since we've had you on the show. That's my fault. Uh, great to have you <laughs> back on. Thanks. It's nice to see you and chat with you. Yeah, we talked about our film festival last year, I remember. I believe time flies, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like just last week, time does fly. But uh, the Star City <laughs> Film Festival coming uh, this weekend to walk on. Uh, just tell us about the festival itself. Uh, give us a, a history of it, uh, how it come to be, and uh, what's all uh, going to be taking place this weekend. Great. Well, um this is my fourth film festival. It's, the first one was in Spring Grove, and uh, we had a guest of honor, Ed Asner, at it. We did a great parade there, and um, you know, really in the in the start of the pandemic or the middle of the pandemic. And then we took it to uh, Caledonia, and also did movies in Spring Grove. And then I had a Sheboygan, Wisconsin film festival. So um, the names evolved, and so I decided to take the film festival and call it Star City Film Festival because it's where the stars meet. Uh, and I moved Sacred Noise Society to Wakan, Iowa, where I now live. And we have a perfect downtown in Wakan with a growing, growing number of businesses and places to stay. And um, so we're Star City, you know, it's awesome. We have a, like, I think there's 40 filmmakers with other people coming to town. We have 34 films at the film festival this year, all at the town theater, town theater and pub on Main Street, walk on. Very uh, cool idea. And uh, what's so neat about what you're doing, uh, you talk about the film festivals in Spring Grove, Caledonia, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, uh, walk on Iowa. When you think of cinema, those are probably not the four cities that uh, first comes to mind. But here right. we are uh, bringing talented people to a small town, uh, driftless area, rural America. And uh, it's proof that uh, it doesn't matter where you live, you can make a great uh, art and entertainment. It is so true. Um, you know, I'm, I was born on a, on a Iowa farm. I was born in Caledonia in a hospital and then moved to Turkey Valley. I graduated from Turkey Valley High School. So I'm an Iowa farm girl, even though I lived in uh, New York City and Chicago for most of my adult life in Milwaukee. Um, but I always, I always knew that I had to leave uh, Iowa in order to, you know, do what I love to do, which was mm -hmm. write and be in the theater and sing. Um, and I always dreamed to be able to come home and do what I do. Um, and I did that by the grace of God before we go. So now I just, I just want to have everyone come see the beautiful part of our world and see how easy it is compared to some other places to do our art and to really flourish and to showcase um, the Midwest. We're not flyover states, <laughs> you know. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're really lucky to have this part of the world to live in. We really are. So is this the definition for you personally of uh, life coming full circle? Yeah, it is. So we're premiering um, Good Morning, Miss America, which is the feature film that I uh, produced and directed and I'm in, and Ed Asner's Daughter Liza plays my sister in it. Wow. And uh, yeah, she's amazing. Our whole cast is amazing. Um, and Phyllis, yes, wrote it. It's her story and it's really about her life. And I play in this movie, actually play the character Phyllis, yes. I play a Portland artist who's a professor, who's from the Midwest, who uh, goes to the city uh, to do her art. 
Um, and then she comes back home and her parents are ailing. Her mother has water in the brain and her dad has, her stepdad has early dementia. And this is about her dealing with what she actually went through. And it's a true story. And it's a powerful story. But what's most beautiful about it, this story that we're hearing on our festival, um, is that it's everybody's story. You know, we're all going through this, whether we're middle-aged kids or our spouse has, uh, you know, dementia or our grandparents. And it's just everybody's story. It's a beautiful, touching story. And I feel really privileged um, to be able to tell the story. So that right. premieres us. Yeah. And how'd you come up with the idea for uh, that particular film, that particular story? And you mentioned it's based on a true story. Uh, how'd you put it all together to uh, put it into a, a cinematic uh, production? Well, I first produced it um, in Decora. I produced it at uh, the Hotel Winnishik and we did dinner theater. That was like three years ago already yeah. um, as a play. Um, and it was great. And then I took it to New York and we did it on Off-Broadway. First, I just directed it and produced it. Um, and then we took it to New York and I played Jane, the lead in it on Off-Broadway because I've always been in the theater and I love to be in the theater. Um, and I also had produced and directed, so I knew the story really well. And I just lost my mom and it just hit me and the story just hit me. And um, I love Phyllis Jess, and I'd met her, and I read her play, and I was just, I'm, like, going to produce this play. But the first time I met her, I said to her, Phyllis, you know, this is a movie. We need to, this is a movie. It's a play, yes, definitely, but it's going to be a movie. So I just, I just, you know, art picks you sometimes. A story picks you sometimes. And um, this story picked me to do it. Um, and then... I guess it just um, was supposed to be because, um, you know, Ed came to my film festival and then he came again last year and I gave him the script for Good Morning Miss America and he was going to play my father in this script. And then, as you know, we lost him last August. Um, so I think, I think this story has, is, is, is meant to be, and I also think the hand of God's in it. And I think the hand of Ed's probably in it from upstairs. I think the hand of, my mother's in it and all the cast who's in it um, and all of the people who come to it and who help with it. So I'm just kind of like a vessel. I just, you know, <laughs> sacred, sacred noise means your internal creative voice. And I just, I just sort of, when I'm called to do something, that's what I pretty much do. And I interrupted you uh, with the question before you were about to answer, uh, when does this film uh, for premiere, uh, next uh, weekend as part of the festival? Saturday night it premieres. Okay. We're having a red carpet and Val uh, Ranky from the Almaquí County is, is helping with us and they're helping sponsor it. And she's wonderful, thank you, Val. Um, and Pete Gingler from Snowpack has helped me on the journey with this as well. Uh, thanks to Pete, Snowpack in Caledonia. And, um, you know, Premieres, the premiere is Saturday night at 6.30, red carpet, sparkle dress. And then also it shows at 4.45 on Sunday. Okay. So those, those are the two times that we showed at the festival. We're not competing in this festival, of course, because, uh, you know, we're just, we're just premiering it. Yeah, but their other films are amazing. Amazing. So come for the whole festival. The whole festival is only $50. Our movies start at 5.30 on Friday nights. And they go until 10 and then all day Saturday. And then we do the premiere and we do talk back after the premiere on Saturday night with the audience and with other filmmakers. And then what? Sunday, what? we have an awards. Oh, that's my puppy. And my puppy Lacey's in the movie too, by the way. Awesome. <laughs> Hi, Lacey. So it's great. Um, and Sunday's at 445. Tickets are $25 for the show. It's basically, you know, it's our world premiere. So speaking of bringing it full circle, we're world premiering at Wakan, and then we're taking it to just north of Milwaukee, which is Cedarburg, which we shot part of the film in Ozaki County and in Sheboygan. And then we're taking it, we're premiering in Portland, Oregon, and then we're going to take it to LA. And then, so, you know, Wakan, Portland, LA, the typical, you know, typical release of a movie. <laughs> well, it, it works for uh, us folks and uh, here in the tri-state area, and it's a great yeah. idea and everything like that. As for the film itself, uh, where we're We'll, we'll, where will most of the activity uh, take place uh, with the films? Uh, where will the presentations uh, be held? How do people uh, get tickets uh, if they uh, want to partake? Sacrednoisesociety.org. 
is to buy online for the tickets. And we're selling out really quick on Saturday. So for, for the premiere, um, but you can buy full pass tickets online or you can come to the theater too. If you want to come to see all the movies, you can get a theater. Lacey, I'm sorry. I apologize, everyone. Hey, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Sacred noise is And you That's know, uh, and okay. you know, I mean, uh, stars of the movie, they want their, uh, they want their attention uh, too. She does. I should go get her. Lacey, uh, see? Yeah, she, she's, she's wonderful in the movie. She did a good job in the movie. She flew to Portland with me when we shot in Portland, Oregon. And um, yeah, it's fun. It was, it's just been a really, I'm excited for everyone involved in it. And I, I'm excited for our community and I'm excited for Portland's community. You know, people don't do big feature films because they're very expensive and they, and there's a lot of moving parts and uh, a lot of people will do shorts instead and shorts are great, but I'm glad this is a feature because the story deserves an hour and 37 minutes, which is what it is. And once again, I'm grateful for all the support around here. We have a, we have a lot of excited people in the area in Wakan. Wakan is booming, man. The women in Wakan are like putting the businesses up and they are killing it downtown Wakan. It's amazing. When everyone else stopped growing, Wakan started to grow again. It's exciting. And, they, and, and it's stuff like this uh, that kind of helps uh, yeah. the community uh, become... I don't want to use the term revitalized, but uh, I'll use it for lack of a better one right now. But oh, yeah. you can get entertainment ah. like this uh, when you can have a variety of businesses, uh, ah. arts, culture, everything like that. That definitely helps uh, kind of uh, revitalize a community. You agree? I totally, I totally agree with you. And John, John Earp, who owns the theater, who owns the town theater, is you know wonderful, and it's so nice to come. You know. See we put a new marquee. Lacey, come here. Want, to, want, want everyone to see you? Yeah, exactly. We put a new marquee. Did you see the new marquee? We put up a lit up sign and it we, it's like, it's really great. It really makes a huge difference in, in downtown. So everything's happening at the town theater and pub. So um, there's a liquor license. You drink while you watch the movie. If you want to drink, get pizza. They have yummy pizza. And it's a super cool theater. So all the talkbacks, all the movies are there. And each person gets to have their, their, their film shown one time during the festival. And it's really cool for the, the filmmakers coming in because they get to see their creation on a big, beautiful screen and with wonderful sound. And, and, you have talk, some and you talked about that marquee sign. Now, there's not enough theaters that have those anymore because uh, yes. you go to the modern theaters nowadays, it's uh, everything's uh, digital. It's just on the side. You go to this theater for this movie, this theater for this movie, and you you yeah. don't have that uh, big feature uh, promotion like you had to back in the day. Those marquee yeah. signs, to me, are kind of a lost art, and uh, I think they need to come back. I agree with you. It's great. Well, you know, it's 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 really wonderful to see. Everybody's like, look, look at the theater. It's very exciting, and John Earp is great. He's, he, he works hard, and so everyone. I hope everyone comes to support him as well um continue to support downtown and all of our small towns around here you know northeast iowa and southern minnesota is just it's the best no argument uh, from me on that end of things anything uh, we're missing uh, here katie uh, anything else you want to pass on about the uh, festival the world premiere next weekend uh, or anything uh, else related to the uh, sacred noise society so I, I really think if someone wants to come to the premiere, I mean, I, we don't have that many tickets, but we have, the Lacey's going to be there. Come on. <laughs> um, Lacey, you're funny. Uh, so they can get it online. I, I, I urge people to do that. Um, and, you know, this is airing. Today is Thursday when this is airing. Yes. Right. right? Um, so, but come to the theater and you, you can get tickets up too. John is open there every night. I'm so sorry, Lacey. Come on. So, yeah. at the theater or online. All right, uh, Katie. We'll we, we appreciate uh, you and Lacey uh, joining us uh, for this uh, interview Thank about uh, the film festival coming up this weekend. Always good to catch up with you. And uh, we got to make this uh, more of a conversation than we have uh, more than once a year because you guys uh, do great stuff at the Sacred Noise uh, Society. There's always stuff going on uh, in your world. And uh, until we uh, talk again, uh, we appreciate your time. Best of luck with you with the uh, Star City Film Festival coming up this weekend. Yeah. See you at the movies. Thanks, Darren. Katie O'Regan. <laughs>
from the Sacred Noise Society and Lacey from the Sacred Noise yes. Society joining us this <laughs> morning. Our fair season continues next week. The Alma Key County Fair begins next Wednesday and continues until July 24th. Michaela Rethamel is with us from the Alma Key County Fair Board and it's a busy time of year for uh, all the fair board members, but a fun time of year, I'd imagine, as well, Michaela. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And uh, tell us about uh, the fair. Obviously, the Grandstand Entertainment gets a lot of uh, attention. Uh, tell, run down the Grandstand Entertainment beginning next Wednesday night. Yeah, so next Wednesday night, we will have the local truck and tractor pull starting at 7 o'clock in the Grandstand. Um, admission is free to all veterans, um, current service men and women and former. Um, so we, we want to honor them. Then Thursday, we're going to have the motocross. Seven four promotions will be coming and bringing that to us. So if, you, if anybody local riders want to participate, um, they most certainly can. And then on Friday, we're going to have hairball. Um, so we're really excited for that. Opening for hairball is going to be the Caminos. And so tickets are, you can buy tickets on sale uh, or online, um, or you can also get them the day of the concert as well. And so that'll be on Friday. Saturday, we're going to have the rodeo. Rogue Rodeo will be coming to put on a show for us. Mutton Bustin' will begin at 6 o'clock p.m. for the kids, and then um, the rodeo following that. And then on Sunday, we're going to wrap it up with the tough trucks. So that'll be a good time. And uh, you mentioned uh, you can purchase tickets online to a few of these shows. How do people do that? Um, so you can go online to our website, ellamckeycountyfair.org, and there's a link there that says buy tickets. You can purchase the tickets, and you can either purchase them as a whole book if you want to come to more than one event, um, or you can sing purchase single day or single night tickets as well. So the fair books are $40, and that gets you into all of the grandstand events all week. Um, otherwise, the concert, the hairball concert, is $25. Um, and any other event is $15 per night, so. And for the first time in a couple of years, you don't have uh, anything to worry about uh, when it comes to health restrictions, et cetera, anything like that. Uh, how yes. fun has it been to uh, basically prepare a fair as normal this year? It, the headache, I mean, there's obviously still headaches and bumps and, and things along the road, but just not having to think about all of the extra precautions. And obviously we still have, you know, we want you to wash your hands and do all of that stuff. But as far as the social distancing and that, you know, if, if you're wanting to do that and wear your masks, that is just fine. We're not going to deter you from doing that. But um, just being able to have a normal fair is going to be very, very nice. And there's plenty of free events uh, during the fair as well. We'll run down some of them. Absolutely. Um, on Wednesday, we'll have the Bill Riley Talent Show. So that is open to any Iowa resident ages 2 to 21. Um, you don't have to be just from Elmakee County. So we encourage people to come and participate in that. Um, we also have different events. We're having bingo this year um, on Thursday. And different contests as far as Lego contests, um, salsa contests, homemade salsa contests, cookie contests. Um, we're doing a diaper derby this year. Um, so that's for anybody ages, you know, zero to 14 months and um, open to the kids. And they just have to be able to crawl from one, from the start line to the finish line and whichever baby wins gets a prize. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. So otherwise we have... Um, a bubble gum blowing contest, a cornhole tournament, um, which there is an entry fee with that, but you do get a payout if you do win. Um, so yeah, just lots of different things going on this year. And uh, some open class events as well. Absolutely. We do have different classes um, that people can sign up for this year. Uh, anywhere from um, cookie decorating to making macrame keychains, um, We've got, oh goodness, here, um, pedal tractor races and um, little cow hat making painting contests and things like that. So um, all of that information is on our website and you can sign up for those online um, to ensure that you've got a spot for that. And of course, one of the big parts of any fair is all, all the 4-H and FFA, uh, livestock judging, everything like that. And it's always good to uh, see the hard work of our young people in our area really come to fruition at events like this. 
Yes, yes. We are excited to have all the 4-H and FFA shows going on. And we actually um, have our new show barn this year. And so that was, is going to be used for all of the um, 4-H and FFA live sex shows, um, except for the horses. They're going to be down in the arena. But uh, if it were to be raining or something, then they can come up and utilize that building. Um, so we're actually fit, putting the finishing touches on it uh, right now. So it will be ready to go. Um, we'll have the concession stand inside and actually at the local business Aztec Parlor will be in there um, serving their drinks and some goodies. And they'll be, um, and that will be air conditioned along with an office and a couple restrooms in there, um, handicap accessible for people to use. So that'll be very nice. And those improvements to a fairgrounds don't happen uh, without a lot of community uh, support. Uh, how much did uh, area people really step up to the plate to make sure uh, the fairgrounds uh, and the fair itself uh, keeps them uh, moving in the right direction? Yeah, we have had some wonderful, wonderful sponsors, um, not only for the fair, but donations towards the new building. Uh, and so actually we have, um, we are about three fourths of the way there for our fundraising goal, which is wonderful. Um, and especially when we first started this whole thing, it was before the price of lumber and all of that kind of went up. Um, but graciously our, 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 um, our low, we, purchased all of our supplies locally from our local businesses and stuff. And so they have been a very generous and, um, and willing to work with us on that. So that has been a very nice, we appreciate that a lot. Um, and of course we are still taking donations for the new barn. And so those forms can also be found on our website um, or talk to any one of the fair board members and we'll be able to get you hooked up with that as well. And you had a great list of uh, community sponsors as well, uh, helping make things happen this year. Uh, why don't you give yeah. those uh, folks some love? Yes, yes, um, definitely. We have a lot of our local businesses. Um, they're all online. Um, but yeah, like our, our implements and our banks and even our um, the guys working on the new building, like um, oh, Kurth Plumbing and Heating and Kerr Electric. I know I was up there yesterday. Um, doing some things at the new building and Kenny Kerr was up there working on it, you know, so it's, they don't just do their business hours, they're there on the weekends too. And so that is is very nice to see, um, because they understand that we want to have this done and ready for fair. And so they're very willing to to be on, in, in, in and doing that. Anything we're missing? Anything else you want to pass on now to the masses this morning? Um, well, we are new this year, I guess. We are doing a Farm Bureau cookout contest, and so we haven't done that for many years. So that'll be on Saturday, and again, that's open to any Iowa resident. You don't just have to be a Farm Bureau member. Um, so we're going to have different um, categories of meat from pork, turkey, um, beef, and I believe maybe some chicken we'll have as an option. And so the winner of that in the first place category does get to advance to the Iowa State Fair on August 16th, I believe is when that competition is. Um, so yeah, we encourage you to take a peek at our new schedule and um, lots of things going on. So we're really excited for this year. I'd imagine you'd have a lot of people volunteering to judge all those cooking contests as well. Right? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so. Anyway, Michaela, we appreciate you taking some time talking to us about next week's Alamakee County Fair uh, this morning. We wish you uh, best of luck uh, with the event. It's uh, going to be a great uh, community event as usual, and uh, let's have fun at the fair. Let's have fun. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Darren. Michaela Rethamel from the Alamakee County Fair Board uh, talking about the Alamakee County Fair July 20th through the 24th in Wacan. <laughs> South Wind uh, Warrior baseball team off to state for the third time in four seasons. Uh, head coach Alex Smith with us. Uh, I imagine it never gets old, coach. It does not. And they're all sweet in many different ways. And uh, we're going to enjoy the moment here tonight with the special group that we got. Zero runs given up in the postseason. How'd you do it? Uh, we knew all year pitching was going to be a strength of ours. And the defense would kind of come along as the guys got more experience in the field, right? We got some new people playing in different positions. And uh, we attacked the strike zone, right? I don't know how many walks we've had in the playoffs. It's not many. We strike a lot of guys out. We got some power arms. Um, I'm fortunate with two power righties. And we got a lefty that's only thrown an inning so far. And he's a good one for us as well. So we, we, we know who we are, right? You, you, you got to find a way to pitch, play defense. And we're not an offensive juggernaut. Our guys know that. We find a way to score some runs. And that's, that's who we are. How special was Keegan tonight? Ooh, he's been real good for a, a few weeks now. It started when he threw almost a perfect game against Tricky Valley, and we're like, he's, he's rolling right now. We've rested him, right? He's been our starting catcher, but we've tried to be strategic with how much he's played at that position and make sure he gets adequate rest, and his, his velocity is where we want it, and uh, he just keeps getting better every outing. 
you were opportunistic with your runs. You probably knew you were going to have to against a kid like Coda. Offensively, uh, what was your approach to just uh, kind of scratch one across and scratch another across tonight? Yeah, we said going in, we tried to win the first three innings, right? And I don't know what inning we scored. It was at the third or the fourth, um, that first run. And we said we get a little momentum early, score that early run, and do things on the base pass, find a way to manufacture. If it's bunt game, run game, whatever that might be. And that's what our guys thought. You get the lead early, you just get that momentum going. And that second run, obviously, that insurance is a big deal as well. And you made a couple of nice plays uh, defensively in the field. You cut down a runner at the plate uh, to uh, take away, which would have been uh, run number one for them. And that, that double play to end it uh, was kind of sweet. Uh, a lot of coaches will say uh, defense starts on that uh, pitching plate. I'd imagine you agree. Yeah, no doubt. Obviously, strikeouts are an easy way to play defense. But we knew going in that we'd see the ball put in play more against us here tonight. And we've been practicing all week and kind of talk about it all year. Make the next play. And it's sometimes that next play is at the next pitch, right? It's an, maybe an errant throw. I think Carson kind of overthrew um, Nick on that. Nick went and picked it up and threw a bullseye in. Is look to the next base, look to the next runner, see if you can get a guy out. And that was a great play at home. And again, a big momentum changer at that moment. What's made this a special group? Yeah, I think it's uh, eight seniors that have been kind of waiting their time that have all played a great role for us, right? We've had some special kids coming through over the past few years, and it was their time to shine, those eight seniors. Like I said, um, we start six in the lineup. We've got two that are kind of pitcher onlys that they joke about it as well. They love playing the game. We talked about three weeks ago when we were really struggling in a five-game stretch playing good teams, Beckman to Tumla to Decora, and Kihai beat us twice pretty handily. And we kind of said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? And we're resilient, right? We wanted to be challenged in the middle of the season by playing great competition and seeing good teams and our guys savored that right and I think I don't want to go undefeated in a season I want to play good teams all the time so we play our best baseball at the end of the year and obviously that philosophy has worked uh, these last few years coach congratulations on a new trip uh, this year uh, to Carroll uh, it'll be a long bus ride but I'm sure it's going to be a sweet bus ride and hopefully you guys can make some noise out there best of luck to you we certainly look forward to it thanks for the coverage here a big manga tuck to our guest on the program this morning Katie O'Regan from the Sacred Noise Society. Katie will have the Star City Film Festival coming up in Wakan. Hear uh, all about it or read all about it at sacrednoisesociety.org. We want to thank Michaela Rethamel from the Alamakee County Fair. The fair starts next Wednesday in Wakan. And congratulations to Alex Smith, the head coach of the Southwind Warriors. Warriors will open up state tournament play on Monday. They're back at state for the third time in four seasons. And Randy Iverson will have the call on 104.7 KVIK. And we thank Alex for taking some time to talk to us this morning. Don't forget, we put these shows on YouTube each and every week. We realize that maybe you can't be by a radio or a streaming device at 9 o'clock on a Thursday morning. But we feel we talk to interesting people and bring you interesting information. And we want you to consume that content on your schedule. So, Head to all of our Facebook pages for the LA Communication Stations, 94.9 and 99.1 The River, KVIK, KNEI, and also Hawk Rock 100.5. We post these shows at those locations or for uh, just for tomorrow. You, uh, or for today, I should say. Uh, you just head to uh, 714 Our Town Program. You can search that on YouTube and uh, get it every other week, another way. You can uh, consume the content of this program each and every week. Our thanks to our sponsor, Decorah Bank Trust. Our thanks to our guest. And most importantly, we thank you for tuning in, for logging on, or for watching Our Town on 94.9 and 99.1 The River.